Hey everyone, I'm Danica Fine with Snowflake. And in case you missed it, a new version of Apache Iceberg was recently released. And with it came a ton of incredible new features and changes that you'll probably want to know about. Now, there's quite a lot of work going on with the Iceberg community these days, so we'll split this update video into a few different parts. Core changes and new features, spec work, including REST and the upcoming V3 spec, and deprecations and removals. So let's look below the surface and see what you can expect with Apache Iceberg 1.7. First up, we'll focus on important core changes and new features. One of the biggest updates in this release, and one that I'm most excited about, is the addition of the new Kafka Connect Iceberg Sync Connector as an official part of the Apache Iceberg project. If you're unfamiliar, the Iceberg Sync Connector is used to convert Kafka topics to Iceberg tables, so it's pretty handy. The connector supports a ton of features, including, but not limited to, commit coordination for centralized Iceberg commits, exactly once delivery semantics, multi-table fanout, automatic table creation and schema evolution, field name mapping via Iceberg's column mapping functionality, and catalog support. Check out the Iceberg docs for more information. The next change gives you more flexibility in how you manage partition specs by giving you the ability to create a new partition spec without setting it to the default spec. Once the new spec has been added, users can reference the new spec via its spec ID in the right APIs. This is great for users who are interested in developing a table with multiple partition specs. For example, creating a table where recent data is partitioned by hour, but older partitioning is done by month. Now, new specs can be added without disrupting existing workloads. If you're a user of the Hive catalog, you'll be excited for this next update, which brings support for views. This change is made possible by the introduction of a new base metadata interface that supports both views and tables with view metadata and table metadata, respectively. Next up, S3 users will find increased support for S3 directory buckets with the ability to identify directory buckets, listing capabilities, and a new method to clean directory buckets. Note that this update does not affect the existing support for general purpose buckets. Another big update for this release is a brand new Iceberg sync for Flink. Now, what's special about this sync is that it adheres to the Flink v2 sync abstraction that was outlined by the Flink community as part of FLIP 143 and subsequently updated as part of FLIP 191. The Flink v2 sync abstraction is fantastic because it gives us a lot of the good things we want in a Flink sync, like the flexibility to use whichever of the Flink APIs that we want, support for exactly one semantics for bounded and unbounded syncs, and most important for Iceberg users, support for small file compaction. Just because you're getting a brand new Iceberg Sync in Flink doesn't mean that we didn't have a sync before. The existing Iceberg Flink Sync implementation will still be around for you to use, but keep in mind it will not be updated to use the V2 Sync abstraction. This next improvement is relevant to users of both Flink and Spark and brings an improvement to how Avro data is read with planned Avro reads. In the past, Iceberg would have to create a workaround Avro schema to read metadata files. But now, Iceberg can directly read from an Iceberg schema, meaning that it can skip this conversion step. As you might imagine, being able to read Avro files directly from Iceberg structs will dramatically improve read performance for metadata files. Another update relevant to Spark is the introduction of a new Iceberg action, rewrite table path. In this version, the action interface has been brought in, and the associated Spark action will be completed as part of a later release. When complete, users will be able to rewrite all or part of a table's metadata files to a staging directory, replacing source prefixes in absolute paths with a specified target prefix. This is an exciting change that marks the first step toward a move table functionality, which will be exceptionally useful for disaster recovery use cases. Also in this release is another Spark action, compute table stats. This time, the change involves not only interface, but the implementation of the action itself. With this update, we can now trigger an asynchronous collection of NDVs from certain columns in an Iceberg table. These stats are then stored in Puffin files. From there, another improvement in this release allows the stats to be utilized by the Spark optimizer. In the past, only Trino was able to collect or use this information, so this is a very useful update on the Spark side of things. For our final notable feature update, users of REST catalogs with vended credentials no longer have to struggle when a particularly long-running query is interrupted by their AWS or GCS credentials expiring. This new functionality allows for vended credentials to be automatically refreshed before expiration. By default, the automatic vended credential refresh is enabled, but the catalog must support new credentials endpoint. And with that, we can move on to more future-focused changes with updates to the spec, including the upcoming v3 spec. First things first, we have an update to the REST catalog open API specification that introduces scan planning endpoints. 
Prior to this change, the workflow was as follows. A user submits a query to an engine. Then, that engine loads metadata by invoking the Iceberg catalog implementation. From there, the metadata is used by Iceberg to obtain the table schema and initialize a table scan. That table scan, in turn, kicks off a planning phase, which involves a client-side read of the table snapshot for relevant data. The final result is a list of file scan tasks, which are then provided to the engine to execute the tasks in a distributed manner. Now, the key point here is that the planning task executes on the client. By adding these new endpoints to the REST catalog open API spec, users will have the option to execute the scan planning operation server-side. This has multiple benefits, including the ability to cache planning for common queries across different query engines, better coordination from the engines to send tasks directly to executors, and enhanced query performance from catalogs being able to use indexing or other structures external to the Iceberg spec. Speaking of performance increases, the next change introduces the ability to parallelize manifest writing for many new files at once. This might sound like a small update, but it'll be instrumental in preparing for delete vectors, which are coming in v3. Another huge change to the spec, and possibly one of the most important changes of this release, is the addition of row lineage, which gives users a better idea of how individual rows evolve over time and opens up use cases such as CDC streams and better materialized view maintenance. With the row lineage spec change, every table row will have a row ID and a last update field. Note that version 1.7 only includes an update to the spec. The implementation will come later. And our final spec change brings a few new types. Specifically, this update adds a new field, chrono unit, to timestamp type, and in turn allows timestamp type to represent multiple types at once, including two new types, timestamp ns and timestamp tz ns. This change is important for future v3 work. And on that note, you can expect more of these types of changes very soon. Engineers across the Iceberg ecosystem are collaborating to add in variant types and geotypes into the Iceberg v3 spec. So watch this space. And with those updates out of the way, it's time for everyone's favorite part of every tech release, the deprecations and removals. We have quite a few this time around, so this will be more of a rapid fire update. First up is a doozy. As of Iceberg 1.7, support for Java 8 has been removed. On the upside, support for Java 21 and Iceberg came earlier this year, so check it out. If you're a fan of Apache Pig, you'll be sad to hear that Iceberg Pig has been marked deprecated. It will now log a warning if you make use of it. Expect it to be fully removed as part of Iceberg 1.8. Also deprecated is the file system table scheme. It'll be removed as part of v4 of the spec. Users are encouraged to check out the spec for more details on where the scheme is unsafe. And this marks the end of the road for purely file-based iceberg tables and further solidifies the direction of the project toward REST catalog interfaces. Next up, the content file interface is getting a bit of a makeover with the deprecation of the path method. In the past, calling path would yield a char sequence, despite the fact that most every use case would involve converting that char sequence to a string. And speaking of strings, also in this change, you'll find a new location method, which happily returns a string. Note that path won't be removed until version 2.0. And for our final deprecation of this release, we have content cache in validate all. It turns out that this method was susceptible to a race condition, and it made sense to remove it rather than cause confusion for users. Expect it to be fully removed as part of 2.0. So there you have it, some of the best and most relevant changes that were part of the Apache Iceberg 1.7 release. If you're curious to learn more about these changes or see what else made it into the 1.7 release, I encourage you to check out the release notes or take a look at the GitHub repository. And remember, as I said before, there were a ton of updates in this version, so we've really barely scratched the surface. There's so much great work being done by the Iceberg community, and I'm excited for all the new features and future developments coming our way. And I hope you are too. See you next time.